I'm CK. Haven't built anything from Bifaco in a while, so we'll fix that today. Today we'll do the Bifaco Burst. The Burst is a trigger manipulator. In a nutshell, you trigger it either through an external uh, CV command or the button on the front, and it fires a burst of triggers out the output. You can manipulate those triggers in a variety of ways. You can use it as a clock divider or multiplier. You can also uh, tell it where the burst should apply. So uh, you can start out with bursts, say, this close together and then tighten them up so it ratchets up and makes a zipper kind of sound and that kind of thing. Uh, it's going to be kind of fun to put together and see how it sounds. And I hope you enjoy the video. Here's the package, Bifaco out of Barcelona, of course. And I picked this up from thonk.co.uk as I do many of my kits. Take this thing out before you start. Before you start, please follow the crazy build guide carefully during the whole. If this is your first DIY project, you can find articles and videos all over the place. And just knowing Bifaco and looking at this board, this probably shouldn't be your first soldering project. Uh, I've got a bunch on my channel I can I talk about as good uh, be, uh, first or second time kits, so take a look for that. Let's get the circuit board out and the front panel. We'll look at the front panel first. And we've got quantity. That looks probably like LEDs. And it says tap equals ping, so I, I believe that's the manual uh, trigger you can do. It could be wrong. I don't know what this is. A couple of circling arrows. I don't know what this is. Quantity. Uh, Looks like it's got a pot or CV distribution across. Uh, I'm not real sure how this goes out, but we'll figure it out. Distribution and then time division or multiplication, ping and probability. Then we've got trigger, external trigger, tempo, EOC. Uh, not sure what that means and out. Uh, I thought, okay, I was wrong about how this works. I thought there were going to be multiple outs. There's only one out. So it's processing a single in and putting it out. Unless, again, I'm completely wrong. But we'll look at the circuit board now, and that should tell us the actual truth. So, yeah, we've got a bunch of LEDs here. Okay, this is looks like a trigger. Probably a switch, cycle A, LED. Hmm. Uh, oh no, there are these, that is, no, I'm sorry, that's CVN, 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 CVN. Pot, 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 pot. And then the other jacks. And as usual, it's got uh, a ton of resistors. Bifaco uses more resistors than anybody I know. And a bunch of diodes here, too. That's interesting. Uh, they're using the AT Mega processor. So there's it's already coded. And a CD4051. Uh, I know what that is. It'll come to me in a minute or two. Uh, so it doesn't look... It looks actually less complex than I thought it might be. Uh, simply because the AT Mega takes the place of a lot of discrete components. Anything go on the back? We've got a pin header there, a resistor, a couple of resistors hiding on the back, uh, another pin header, a bunch more resistors. That's That line goes funny, just confused me a little bit. And here's the main board. And the power connector will go here. And this is Bifaco.org Barcelona Earth Dog. 
maker and serial number. They didn't put the serial number in. They often do. They didn't this time. It doesn't matter to me. Let's see what the parts are now. We know it's an AT Mega. We're not going to have many uh, transistors. Probably, I see one transistor up here. And I think this is probably a voltage regulator, but I'm not certain. Cheapy knobs, no set screws, no metal inserts. Power cord. Stickers, I got a bunch of Bifaco stickers, of course. Then we've got our pots and jacks. They all look fine, nothing particularly interesting in there. I'm sorry, I'm pausing because uh, a cougar took down a deer about uh, 300 yards from my, my workshop here about two nights ago, and I'm listening for any activity, and the coyotes went crazy when he did that. So I'm just keeping an ear out to see if he's still around. Okay, we've got a bunch of resistors, a bunch of diodes, uh, two ferrite cores. Interesting, they're all quarter watt resistors. And a bunch of stuff in here. Oh no, there's much, many more transistors than I thought. And this one, I have to see where, they're, where they go. I, and this is a voltage regulator, I believe. Let me pull it out and take a look at it. This is a, yeah, 78 LF5 5 volt voltage regulator. And a bunch of, I'll dump the, I won't dump those out yet because I'm going to do the resistors first. And there's a timing crystal, and I don't see the AT Mega. Where's the AT Mega? Oh, it's in this bag. That's why you don't see it. And we've got that uh, CD4051, which I'm, I, it still hasn't come back to me and a 074 op amp and the mega. They didn't mark it typically or often, I shouldn't say typically, uh, when you get a microprocessor that already is coded, they will have marked it with a dot of ink, highlighter, paint, or whatever. They haven't done that on that. And of course, my 17th Bifaco Panel nut wrench. Again, I wish I could tell them, don't put one in. I don't need another one. I've got too many of them. So that's what we've got. I'm going to, during the time between I, when I turn the cameras off and I turn the cameras back on to start putting this together, I'm going to break the boards apart and clean up the edges. Oh, what does this say? Thanks to Code Maniacs. Jeremy Bernstein and Eloy Flores. I'm probably mispronouncing that one, but that's not unusual for me. So I'll break that apart, get the soldering iron and heat it up, and we'll start working on this thing. I changed my mind. I decided to do the uh, breaking free of the sprues and uh, firing it off a little bit on camera because, I mean, what's the point of having a it if you leave stuff out. So I generally just take a pair of needle nose pliers and flex it a little bit. And that snaps it off pretty well, the individual boards. So we're going to start as we typically do by putting the resistors on. And we've got 1200 K's. Let's see, you're going to start with, I'll put one on. We're going to start with R7, which is right here. Check out how close the leads need to be bent to the resistor. And this board is designed, is laid out for quarter watt resistors, which are small. So you got to, 
you're going to want to be bending the leads very close to the body of the resistor. Now, as is typical, this is a good Bifaco board. Through hole plated, of course. And we'll just that one in, that's good. It takes solder very well. And of course it does in the typical Bifaco fashion. Bring this up, maybe it'll focus on it. The circuit board traces are all curly. They are not straight. Bifaco does not like straight circuit board traces. Bless their hearts. So that's one resistor on with some commentary. Now we've got a bunch of resistors left to do and there's nothing much more to say about them. So I will put the cameras or the video in fast replay and mute the commentary so you can enjoy resistor time. So that's resistor time for today. Pretty straightforward, not all that many resistors. Uh, and just be aware, in general, this area right here is for odd, no I mean even number resistor, this is for odd, but that's not 100% true. So uh, like there's a 23 over here in the uh, even side. One other thing, since we've got some ferrite beads to install, you want to save a couple of resistor leads to do that, and we'll do that in a little bit. But right now, we're going to do our BAT48 resist uh, diodes. These are the blue and black ones, as contrasted to the 4148s, which are kind of orangish and black. And this will be pretty much the same as the resistors. We won't spend a lot of time talking about it. You can see they're all in this row here and they've got a very clear indication with that white stripe about which side the black stripe on the diode goes. So, back to fast replay. There's those little fellas. And as you can see, they're a little snaggly because even if you bend the leads very close to the body, uh, they don't quite fit. It's as if they use the uh, quarter watt resistor template instead of a bat uh, template, so the holes are a little too close together. Not a big deal. And then we've got our two power conditioning diodes. The black ones with the silver stripe, 5817s, and if you're wondering where they go, they usually go near the power connector because they're protecting you from reverse voltage and having the unit blow up, which while dramatic and exciting is not something you want if you've just put it together. Now we'll do the ferrite beads. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a bead, put it on this resistor lead I kept, bend both sides over like so, now we'll find F1, and that again, these will be near the power connector because they're acting like little chokes or inductors, whatever you want to call them. Bifaco generally does this. Some other kit makers or module designers don't put ferrites on, which is pretty okay because most Eurorack power supplies that I've seen at least have some pretty clean power. And now we'll put the sockets on.
And that's all the sockets. Now we're going to go into the other bag and get out. Oops. I looked up at the camera and my hat came off again. Get out the capacitors. Not the electrolytics. We're doing other things besides. I'm going to just dump this thing out. Because all the LEDs are making their legs are tangling things up. So we will do the 104s first. Make sure there's all they're all 104s because there's a 22. There's the 22. Put the 22 back. How many 22s are there? There are two 22 picofarads. So we won't do those yet. Just the 104s. Now we'll put the timing crystal on. Let's see how fast is this. This is a 16 megahertz crystal. Again, not polarized. Put it on either way. Now we'll do the electrolytic caps. I think I'll put all the transistors on too. They're all the same. They're all 3904s. And three of them go here, three of them go on the pots and knobs and jacks board. And while we're at it, we may as well put the two voltage regulators on. And now, they'd like us to put the ICs on the board. So that is the ICs in, and now we'll do the pin headers. And that, I believe, is, oh no, i got to do the power connector. And now that, I believe, is everything on this board. Well, there's this angle header that you can... I think that's for programming the uh, thing. Yeah, that's the programming port to program the AT Mega if you want. I'm not going to do that. Now we'll position all the stuff on here. Uh, next step is to put the front panel on. To get everything lined up. Except the LEDs. I don't care about them right now. I'm going to do the controls first. And I've got my little clamp. Clamp the boards together. And now, I'll solder all these connections. And uh, we'll come back for the LEDs. So I'm going to turn the cameras off while I solder these connections because that's not very interesting to watch. All the pots and knobs and switches are soldered. So now we'll do the LEDs. And what we need to do is we need to push them all through their little holes in the front panel before we solder. Pretty easy to do. You just kind of wiggle it around until you feel it go into the hole in the front. And got all of them except one on this end. One's being a little pain. There it goes. Now we'll go down, same thing on this end. I'm going to set it down. Does this sit flat? No. This little piece of foam to support that. 
Now what I would recommend these three or four LEDs on the inside there are a little bit of a pain to get to. Uh, what I'm, I would recommend is you do one pin on each of these then cut that pin off so you can solder the other pin. Just my recommendation because I don't like to be threading my soldering iron and solder through a forest of pins if I don't have to. Now I'll put all the panel nuts on. Now it's about time to put the boards together, but first I'm going to go through here and look at all my solder connections. Make sure I soldered everything. Make sure nothing shorted out. Now it's time to mate the boards. Oh, I left some leads still on there. Get everything lined up. Everything's almost good. There we go. Secure that back panel with this screw. I mean this nut on the stud. I don't like that. Hmm. Well, it's not actually touching. Oh, I gotta put my maker initials on here. C K serial number one. Now, put the power connector in. Kind of a funny, kind of a funny fit because you gotta crank the wire out. Now, we'll put the knobs on. And there we go. That's the front. It's the side. The back. The other side. The top. And the bottom. Now we'll put it in the rack and see how it bursts. Okay, we're in the rack and I've actually read the user's manual so I have a better idea what's going on. So, you set a trigger or a time interval and then this will burst the number of pulses inside the time interval you want and uh, there's a lot of variety to that. Uh, quantity, uh, distribution, so they don't have to all be uh, evenly divided, but they can be evenly divided, and then probability can change uh, some unpredictability into the trigger train. So uh, ping input sets the size of the time window via the trigger or clock. So if you have this big of a time window, uh, you'll and have a five bursts, I'm just making that up right now, uh, there'll be five bursts in that space, if you set the time window like that, there'll be five bursts in that space. You know, you can understand, you can always read the manual to understand what is actually saying. Uh, distribution controls how the triggers are distributed inside the burst. And again, he has a bunch of diagrams that show uh, how 
triggers can fire off inside a window. So basically, think about it, you have a time window, and inside that time window, you have a number of uh, bursts inside there set by this. Also, there's tap tempo to set that time window, or you can set that window with ping. And I'll be trying both. Uh, this is cycling. You can cycle bursts if you want, if you find a nice burst pattern you like. And they uh, save some of this inf information in, in non-volatile RAM so it sticks around even when power goes on and off. And probability, as you can expect, randomizes things to a certain extent. So let's turn this thing on first. See if anything catches fire. Nothing caught fire. Oh, we have to calibrate it. I forgot that. Uh, let me find that real quick. Because I just did that wrong. Okay, so I'm going to have to power it back off. And now we're going to set, of course it scrolled back when I leaned over, distribution time. So we'll do distribution to the middle, time div multi to the middle, and probability at the middle. And we'll power the module while holding down the quantity encoder button and manual trigger button. So I gotta use two hands. So what are we doing? I'm gonna hold down these two buttons and power it up and the circle of LED should go around three times. I think it must have. And now it is calibrated. Self-calibrated as you can imagine. So if I'll let me bring up the scope. I'm going to adjust the voltage level down. And let me change the time base a little bit. The top uh, output is coming from my regular LFO, which I'm going to be uh, putting in trigger when the time comes. Time comes. Ha! <laughs> Get it? Uh, the output is going to the second line. So as you can see, nothing's going out yet because we haven't triggered it. Uh, the third line on the... Uh, Scope is EOC, and what EOC is end of cycle. At the end of the cycle, it will uh, it will dump the rest of the burst. So that's interesting. Now it's also interesting as we look here on the voltmeter ammeter. It's pulling 49 milliamps just at rest. Let's see what the negative rail is pulling. Nine milliamps. Negative, uh, plus 5 is pulling none. The peak was 51. Okay, so that's interesting. And I've got this plugged into uh, my frequency central seismograph drum module. I think. I think it's powered up. We'll see. So I'm going to set the burst window. I'm making it kind of big. Interesting. As I tap that, Oh, I'm turning the cycle off also. As I tap that, it uh, goes up 2 milliamps. Let me fire the trigger off first once, and we'll look at the scope, see what happens. And we saw what happens. That's a lot of quantity. Let me turn the quantity down to like 3 per burst. So that's two per burst. And that's the magenta line or the second line here. 
So we can go to four per burst. All the way up to... Now I'm going to take these all, the time div and distribution all down. And that zips. Hear that zipping up? Let me take distribution way up. And that's a reverse burst. I mean a reverse cast, uh, ramp up. It slows down as it goes. Now I'm going to take the time division to the middle. That changed that quite a bit, didn't it? Because that's what it is with time div all the way down. There's time div halfway up. It's time div all the way up. It's really fast. I'm going to change this drum sound. I don't like that drum sound. Maybe it is the best one for recording. See, that, there's a lot going in there. And we can do a sin single one. Now I'm going to uh, take the output of the LFO. Where is the output of the LFO? The output of the LFO is gone to some place it shouldn't ought to be. Should it? Oh, there it is. Seriously, where it is? There it is. Okay. I'm sorry, I get confused. So now we're going to trigger this with the LFO so I don't have to keep hitting that button. And you can see the cyan, the third line is the end of cycle burst. So we'll make more. Now I'm going to slow down the window, the ping. And actually I'm going to take, uh, let me grab another cable here. I'm going to take another LFO and put that in ping. Slow that way down. Now another thing you might be noticing here, I, which I think is a really brilliant idea, is, let me turn that LFO all the way down for a minute. When you change any of these knobs, it's reflected in that circle of LEDs. So whichever knob you're turning, you can see the position, which is pretty dang cool, except quantity. Uh huh, because that's CV in, and uh, this is an attenuator for it, so it's not. Now I'm going to try the probability thing now. Let me turn the LFO up again. So probability is a little scrambled. Now I'll turn that to the middle. Turn probability all the way up. And that turned it off. Turn multiplier on again, or up some more. Let me try that manually.
So for each trigger, like you might have from a kick drum or even your basic tempo clock, it'll give you a variety of things. I'm going to take the ping control back out of that because I think it's messing up my demo. But it will be interesting. I'm going to take the uh, another LFO and put in the quantity CV because that should ch change. I'm going to turn the speed on that up a little bit. So what's, what you're seeing here, or I believe this is what you're seeing, is as this uh, quantity goes in, it's showing you how many beats will be in the next burst. Like that was two, this will be a bunch. Yep, that'll be a bunch. Yeah, no, that's really cool. If I trigger it, that's one burst. So that's pretty cool. I'm going to turn the speed of that LFO up a bit. Uh, and you can see how it varies a lot as it's oscillating back and forth. I just blitzed, uh, uh, I went to high speed on the LFO. So you can see how this is working. The only thing I'm not getting a good sense for is the probability. And then here, uh, you can pull the tempo out if you want to feed that to something else. Let me put this, and put the quantity LFO into distribution for a little bit. So you can hear it's offsetting a little bit, and you may be able to see that on the scope too. And some skipping involved. I'm going to go into cycle mode. So that's repeating. And I can still change things while it's in cycle. You know, turn probability way away. and distribution way up to and turn cycle back off because that, you got the idea on that. Let me get this really cranking. It almost feels like it has an upper limit. I'm going to take this out for a second almost feels like it has an upper limit on how fast it's going to respond. So remember again, that's one pulse going in to trigger it, and then that's the burst that's going on in the window of time I set with uh, the ping. So I'm going to shorten the window. Now I just tapped twice really fast, so it shortened the window quite a bit. Let me turn distribution up. That should be very... that's too rich. There we go. Turn probability all the way down again. So I'm going to open the window up again. 
tap, 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 tap. So that's a slow tap. And again, that has nothing to do with the tempo. It has to do with how big the time window is uh, between, uh, I mean, for the triggers out, even though they'll always be ended by uh, a new pulse, a new trigger pulse coming in, which is why we have the end of cycle pulse going on too. Turn probability up again so we lose some of those. Now it's just thinking about stuff because it said I don't want to do it right now because my probability is low. Take it back up to probability of 75% or something. And by the way, the CV going into that is only positive. So a sine wave won't uh, matter. It's just uh, 0 to 5 or 10 volts positive. I forget what it is. Take distribution down a little bit. So again, it's a long window. Uh, oh, because I, I turned time div all the way down. And again, you can adjust all those. I'm going to turn the quantity of beats down again. Now that's two. I'm going to go all the way up to the maximum because we have a slow window. I'm turning probability all the way to 100% just so it continually fires on. Now I'll change probability. And it thought about it said, nah, I don't want to do it this time. because it's set at roughly 50 percent. So sometimes it just won't fire off. And again, you can make that variable by controlling it there. And that's on LFO2. I'm sorry, I'm just reminding myself where it is. So the probability of whether a beat will fire off will change. I just changed the drum sound because it felt like it. So I'm going to go back into distribution on this one. So that's with the LFO cycling through. Uh, at about uh, one beat per second, one wave per second. That's pretty neat. Let me turn that all the way up. Let me get that rapid firing in there. I don't think it likes it. Yet. Probability down a little bit. No, I don't. I don't think I like the probability. That's changing distribution based on uh, my LFO CV. I'm going to tighten it up again. Tap, 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 tap. I'm going to turn quantity up as much as I can. That's too much. 
as you can see, it barely can manage that. And you can see on the scope, I hope, uh, let me check that camera just to be sure. You can see on the scope, the pulses get further apart because of where I've got distribution. I'm going to turn distribution all the way in and it cram it starts slow and accelerates. Slow. Right in the middle, it's pretty much even. Now we'll change it the other way again. I'm going to open the window up again. Tap, 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 tap. Turn cycling back on. So that's what it does. Uh, let me turn this down a little bit. Uh, so that's what it does. It's going to do a lot of interesting things for you. That I, And again, putting it in a, a kick drum might not be the best. Uh, another, oh, let me see. Let me try this. This might sound horrible. I don't know. But I may as well try it. No, that's a court. That's a, it's not doing what I thought it was going to do because it shouldn't because I was thinking wrong. But that's okay. So that's what it does. It's a pretty nice unit. You saw it was pretty straightforward to put together. Uh, nothing too uh, challenging. Probably a good third or fourth kit. And another good one from Bifaco. And again, go read the user manual if you want more in depth, and they have some more complete demos of this I was just doing uh, with my limited understanding having just put it together. So that's what it is, the burst from Bifaco, and I hope you enjoyed the video.